Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living one. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you for this moment as I'm about to preach your word. I pray that I decrease and you increase in my life forever. I have no wisdom of my own, but because you live, I can taste tomorrow. Speak, Lord, for thy servant hearing. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Today, I want to preach on the theme, Stop Looking at My Glory. Sit down and listen to my story. I have come to shoot the gun that begins the race. I have come to blow the trumpet in time. For many of you that are watching or listening to this broadcast, I want you to know that people have envied you. They are looking at your victories, looking at the successes you've attained, and they forget to sit down and listen to your story. They envy you because of the car you drive. They envy you because the house you have built. They envy you because of the education and achievement you've attained. But they fail to sit down and listen to your story. And friends, so many Christians today talk so much about the promises of God and they forget about the process of God. Many people want to become professors. Many people want to become pastors. Many want to become politicians because they have seen other people enjoying the blessings, enjoying the prosperity, enjoying the victories of those, of those positions. But they fail to sit down and listen to the story of how those people made it in life. We are quick to judge people because of the place they find themselves. We are quick to judge people because of what they are doing. Have you ever sit down with them and listen to their stories? Have you ever asked them what brought them to the place where they are today? You can preach my message, but you will never be me. You will put on my suit, but my fingerprint is different with yours. Today, I want to preach from Exodus chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. The Bible says there was a time when the children of Israel were in captivity in the land of Egypt. They were suffering under the wicked king Pharaoh. They were going through so many tough times. They were persecuted. And the Bible said one day the Lord made a plan that he would one day by the grace of God deliver Israel. And he made a decree when the people were increasing in the land, Pharaoh, a wicked king, made a decree in the land. That any male child that is born in Egypt must be killed. And if a, 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 the female were born, they need to be speared. And the Bible says when people were bring, giving birth to their sons, they were killing them. But this woman, Moses, gave birth to a son. And this woman kept this little boy for three months. This woman was wise. The woman was smart. The woman knew what she was doing. She knew that the child that she was carrying, that child is the hero and deliverer for the children of Israel. The Bible says when this child was born, he was kept for three months and he was placed in a basket, left into the river Nile. This boy would have been eaten by wild animals. This boy would have been drifted away. This boy would have suffered anything or this boy would have drowned. But by the grace of God, the Lord kept him for a reason. Many a times we hear about the story of Moses, how he was supposed to become the next prime minister of Egypt. The Bible says when the king's daughter went into the Nile, we don't know what she went there to do. But my Bible says when she saw the basket, she was eager. She moved with compassion and she picked up the basket and realized that this is one of the Hebrew children. The woman asked, and there was this little girl, Moses' sister, who was around, and she came to them, do you want me to get you a nurse that will nurse this boy for you? And Pharaoh's daughter accepted the offer, and the mother of Moses was brought to nurse this boy. This boy was kept. He grew up in the palace. 
He grew up to be the next hero. But Moses realized that I don't care how I enjoy in Israel, in Egypt. I don't care the benefit. I don't care the Porsche cars I'm driving. I don't care the security in the house. I don't care my fat bank account. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 24, Moses, when he had grown up, he refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. The Bible says he forsook the throne of Israel. He went to his people. In other words, Moses, when he came, he suffered for the children of Israel. But this story is so powerful. This story is so thrilling. This story is so moving. As I want to remind you one more time, I'm preaching on the theme. Stop looking at my glory. Sit down and listen to my story. If you want to know what brought me to this place that I found myself today, come sit down with me. Let me tell you my story. Don't envy me because I am a nurse. Don't envy me because I am a lawyer. Talk to me. Let me tell you that it was not an easy road. I burnt the midnight candle. I study hard to become who I am today. Many a times people look at your glory. They look at your victory. They look at the money you are making now. They fail to sit down with you and listen to your story. Don't see me living in a very big house. You think uh, this, it is all. But sit down with me. Let me tell you what are some of the things that I went through for me to become who I am today. So God be the glory. I have come to let you know that we should not be looking at the glory of others. We should not envy their positions. We should not envy what the Lord has given them. Sit down with them and listen to their story. Moses was in this kind of predicament. He forsook the throne of Egypt. He suffered. He would have died in that water. But thanks be to God, the Lamb of God. He is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the rock of Gibraltar. And the Bible declares that this man Moses grew up and he realized that I don't care how I enjoy. I don't care if I stay here. I don't care if I become the next prime minister. Pastor, let we tell them. Jesus, he said, that's not what he wanted to say. Say, wait till. Nobody know you got to. 